Welcome to another video of Shag Shop. So, we are working on the 5VZ, which is the white forerunner that we've been messing with. It had the blunt head gasket and the warped head. So we got a new head and we got a new head gasket. We got it all put back on. We got the fuel rail ready to go back on. And then we got to put the intake on and everything else. So, where we want to go from here? We're gonna go ahead and actually pull this engine and this trans because we have the green forerunner over here for a new project. We actually got the rear axle in it in the last video and we have a lot of different things we wanna do with this one. So we're gonna build on this one and what we're gonna do is a little bit of a surprise for this, but we're gonna be hopefully drawing out and laying out in the next video of what we wanna do with this. So as you see, we got a 1984 Dodge Ram van. This thing is awesome. Uh, Jeff wants to go ahead and make it an expedition overland slash rig. Um, he wants to take the carpet out and rebuild the interior with a little bit of hardwood. Uh, we got some other ideas that he wants to do with it, but the front end needs a little bit of work. Um, Shag said that it wasn't quite road worthy. So, in this video, we're going to go into a little bit of working on the engine, working on the van, and working on the green 4Runner. So we've got the forerunner swept out. We got some of the parts of it sitting in the back actually. Um, the center console goes, the grill, and the door panel all go to this forerunner. The gold intake is for the white runner. Um, so this is a 1997 forerunner. It's obviously missing some carpet. The rest of the carpet is pretty torn up. I mean, not terrible after a vacuuming, but as you can see, we're gonna need to do some shampooing to these seats and get to work on cleaning it up. I honestly like the look of it though. It has a lot of potential. So we're gonna be working on this a little bit more today. Just cleaning up wise, getting the numbers off, washing the front. But inside the shop, we got the blue van and we're gonna start working on that. On it. So we started over there. We got a little sidetracked by a squirrel. Squirrel! So, this is your intake manifold. And Shag, you want to explain <laughs> what was going on with it? Well, this right here is, is having a running problem where um, Senior Jeffrey brought to our attention that uh, it runs like shit and it's dangerous. It's going to blow up. It had massive backfires you could hear all the way down the road. So, initially... It was a big old Polaris. <coughs> and this was separated from there. And them holes go in them holes. And them holes make it run. It was running rough. It was way too much air. Way too much air. So this is... It was sucking. This is a little addition. We just got six of these. Not the same exact ones, but six different side-by-sides that you all are gonna see a lot more on the channel. But that's one problem addressed. If we had a B BHF, we'd probably beat the shit out of it. That is true. So we're putting these side by sides to great use out here at Shags. Is that a tree? Yeah, that's a tree, yeah, I think. That's, that's a whole ass tree. I think I can put it in the back. I think I can put it in the back. <laughs> I think mean, you can too, Shag. <laughs> Yeah, we need some windshields. Yeah. 
Anybody know any good Polaris windshields by chance? Drop it down in the comments. Oh yeah, I bet this thing crab walks. The tires on these things are ginormous. So after a little bit of fun in the woods, we're actually coming in to work a little bit. Tanner has joined us. Shag and Jeff are playing with Polaris over there. So we're actually readjusting and replacing actually the pitman arms. And no, not the pitman arm. at, as you see right there, that movement, that's not supposed to go like that. Yeah, just like that. That's not supposed to be like that. Wait, what was it Tanner? Not the pitman arm. No, the pitman arms right here. Pitman arm's good. We got to replace all, all the tie rods. Yeah, everything in the steering except for the pitman arm. Everything in the steering except for the pitman arm. Well, at least I was right about one thing. <laughs> um, so we're going to hop to a time lapse and let y'all see us work. <laughs> can see we got everything taken out and uh, unassembled the two sway bars right there not sway bars excuse me adjustable tie rod ends we got the new ones on so with all that new stuff on we got some more new parts going up in here this was giving us a little bit of trouble because the washers that came with them were just a tad too large. We think somebody bent the uh, original brackets, which, you know, is pretty annoying, okay, yeah, which the washer needs is to go another reason why to not to double check whenever you go to the mechanics to see what is what they've done with your vehicle. So with these going on, once once they are on, this will go in and then once that is in we just tighten down the torque and then we do an alignment well we're done we've got everything attached um steering is good alignment is i um we also did the rear shocks or yeah rear shocks on the back now we're gonna let this thing down drive it out and get all the toys back in for the evening What a fun filled day. I was able to take the van out uh, to get a quote over in Seneca on exhaust. This exhaust is rusty, it has leaks. So we got a quote on that, ran some other errands, picked up some parts, worked on the white four runner this morning, but now we're going to head down to Jeff's to see the new camper. And just like that, they're actually pulling into shags for right now, I guess. And we're about to walk through a real nice trailer. We got a big old camper. We got Shag's truck. I'm driving Jeff's van down there. And here's my co-pilot. Hey, Woody. What's up, bud? And away we go. Like I said, Y'all are going to be the first into Jeff's brand new humble abode. So Jeff, tell the people what you got. Um, here we have a 2014 Keystone Cougar with a couple of slide outs. Um, just fun, man. That's all we got is just fun. So you walk right into the kitchen area right here. Uh, she's in nice shape too. Beautiful cabinetry. Let me tell you what. you walk up to the two 
slide out living room right over the fifth wheel. All right, man, somebody clean that refrigerator. Very nice. Thank you, people. I appreciate that. It is a one bedroom, one bath, but man, it needs a little bit of love, but it's, it's nice. It is very nice. Yeah, I've got a bunch of bone out balls, man. That's all it is. And here is the master suite. With another slide out. I ain't mad at it, man. I ain't mad at it at all. Shag and Jeff went and picked this up this morning from Atlanta while I was messing with Aaron's in the blue van. Well, we got him. And that's a big deal, dude. We're just testing it out. Just testing it out. So, with the evening going on, it getting colder outside, we've moved inside to start working on the Polaris's. So this is a Polaris 900 we're messing with right here, the HD. Um, it has a Gremlin that we've been chasing for a while now. So Shag is actually going to go ahead and, you said, run the injector. I'm going to try to pulse the injector. No, I'm going to pulse this injector and see what happens. So we're pulsing injectors, I'm trying to make this thing run. Up. It sprays. Well, it sprays. It sprays. Yeah. So we have, we've been chasing a gremlin, and for those of you that don't know, your injector fires a little bit of fuel into your air intake to fire, to meet with the spark to crank it up. So with it spraying out there, just a little bit at a time, that means our injector is working. Now, when we crank the key, nothing comes out, which means one of those. It's not pulsing. There's no pulse. There's it's not no pushing pulse. it through. So we're going to be chasing probably a, a, a rabbit tail or a gremlin. Yeah, gremlin, gremlin not rabbit tail. Gremlin ground. We need a rabbit foot for good luck rabbit to find this thing. Nice. Here we go.